Warriors. Spoilers. And we're going in hard. So this is spoilers from here on out. Yeah. I've said it. Oh man. So yeah. This movie. It was good. Yeah. It was good. 7 out of 10. But. The big issue. Movie's got no future. And the movie was kind of all over the place. If I'm being absolutely honest with you. But somehow the pacing was good. It did have pacing. But it had a lot of unfinished. It didn't tie up any loose ends. And it left the movie in a kind of loose end. But they did that I feel for the reason of. James Gunn's universe. So essentially like when they wrap everything up. In the entire movie. And he fixes Flashpoint. Kind of sort of. Right. When he's in his timeline. They manage to clear his dad. Bruce Wayne calls Flash. And then he comes to see Flash. To congratulate him that his dad has been cleared. Of murdering his mother. Nora Allen. And she was she was pretty cool in this movie. Yeah the relationship. That Barry Allen had with his mum. Nora was beautiful. It was some of the best. It was like some of the best things about the movie. Was the scenes that he was with her. Yeah. And that contributed to the reason. I give the movie a. 7 out of 10. Yeah. In terms of. Give. Bringing it up. So there's three contributing factors. The interaction that Barry Allen had with his mum, Nora Allen. Supergirl, she was amazing, dude. Her acting was ridiculous and she looked so good. And Michael Keaton, Batman. And the open sequence for this movie. And the sequences you see throughout the movie of what if. In scenarios with like Superman and... Batman and The Flash and everything like that. But you see scenario, right, where Bruce Allen, sorry, Bruce Wayne calls Barry Allen. And when he sees Bruce Wayne, it's George Clooney's Batman. And that's when you realise, when you screw around with the timeline, some things cannot be fixed. Even if you do put everything back in place, the fact that you've been there, it's like pulling on a string, on a jumper or a pair of trousers. Once you've done it, you've kind of unraveled it. Even if you don't pull it, as time goes along, it will work its way loose. And that's kind of what this movie... And there was a thing where when they met with Michael Keaton Batman... He explained this movie in an amazing way that made sense. As in the movie is like spaghetti. In a Flash movie, when you mess with the timeline, you get two lines. And you can think of it as it diverges when you mess around with it. But it doesn't. It creates a different timeline in a different direction. And it can either separate off. Or it can stay there and it can break off. But it's still in the same line. But it's just different. But what Barry Allen does, because he changes it so much. It becomes just a complete mess of spaghetti and it's all over the place and it's all jumbled up and it's all mixed up and even if you do find the line of spaghetti is most probably going to be broken and maybe you can i don't know squeeze and mush the spaghetti together and it'll be together but it's still going to be mushy and it's still going to be able to break you know, and I like that analogy that Michael Keaton Batman used to explain the multiverse of what Barry Allen did to it. It's over. A Snyderverse is over, man. And this made me really realise it is. There was a scene 
where Zod was in the movie and he was talking to um, Kara. And she explained me and Cal, Cal L, Superman, were coming to Earth. They were sent to Earth in two pods. Her pod went to Earth. His pod got taken off course. She got captured because, you know, from a young age, everything like that. But Kalel, his capsule got intercepted by Zod. And Zod said this to Kara. And he said, we found out that we need the blood of the Chosen One in order to make the Terra engine that will completely change a planet. We need the blood of the Chosen One. But it didn't work when we took it was cow's blood. We need your blood, Kara. You're the one. And she was like, what did you do? And he's like, the child, he, and she said, what did you do? And he's like, the child didn't survive. The experiments and that's when she just went mental and i was like oh shit and she did go off but then some goofy music kicked in and it was like the music didn't suit the rage she was in and it kind of just offset the moment of you having the flash versus non and Ursa, and then Zod versus Kara. The music kind of like ruined that mood. But the scene was still good because it was the intersection. It was the moment that changes everything. Because no matter what happened in that scenario, Batman dies, Kara dies, and Flash just keeps on trying to fix it. The Flash from the timeline. That was created by the Flash from this multiverse timeline. That was created by Barry Allen getting knocked off course. And then you think to yourself, what came first? Barry Allen choosing to go back in time? Or was it the fact that the Barry Allen that was created by the Barry Allen... That created Flashpoint that got knocked into the multiverse that created the Barry Allen that started him on a new course for a multiverse in the first place. Confusing, right? That's the movie. And it kind of makes you think to yourself, what came first? It's like the analogy, what came first, the chicken or the egg? That's literally, actually what they do. But they don't really explain it. But they kind of do. Because when Barry Allen gets killed from the alternate multiverse that got created by the Barry Allen that we know that created Flashpoint, it killed off the Barry Allen that is stuck. He's kind of like stuck in a loop. Where he just keeps on trying to fix the timeline. Where Kara and Michael Keaton Batman get killed. But he can't do it. He can't beat that intersection. Because he's not meant to. And because he can't stop doing it. It's making all the worlds implode. And then you see all the different multiverses. And you see um, the original Adam West Batman timeline. You see uh, Michael Keaton Batman. You see George Clooney Batman. You see Christopher Reeve's Superman timeline. You see Nicolas Cage's Superman timeline. You see all different types of multiverses and timelines of all these heroes. And you see different versions of The Flash. And it's just like... It's, it's, it's cool to see. But it kind of doesn't mean anything. 
it is it is good it is good and it is interesting but it doesn't mean anything it's like a lot of fan service just for the sake of the fan service and hey i'm here for the fan service i wish it did make sense because if it did make sense it would be cool but as i said that's what i meant when i say this movie is like a cocktail where i don't know a teenager goes into a bar grabs all different types of um, alcoholic beverages and drinks and just pours it in oh that's a nice alcoholic beverage hmm 50,000 pounds that's an expensive cocktail let me pour that in it's got to taste good and then mix it up and then taste it hmm let me try a little bit extra hmm, I haven't tried that in then pour some of that hmm 50% of people are going to like it 50% of people are not going to like it and that's kind of what I feel this movie is but it's still good because I like some superheroes and if Michael Keaton Batman was not in a movie this movie would go down to a 6 if Supergirl wasn't as amazing and cool as she was this movie would go down to a five real talk this is my perspective of the movie right but because of them they make the movie work batman does a lot of legwork in this film a lot and one thing that i like as well is kind of the acting styles felt very different timeline like you had michael keaton's batman who was kind of wacky funny cool over the top and he was kind of like the bad uncle in a scenario where ben affleck would say don't mess with the timeline don't do this don't do that michael keaton batman would be like You've done it. You've managed to do something that none of our superheroes have been able to do. Let's do it more. Let's push forward what we're doing next. You know, that's what I liked about him. And then you had um, Kara, Supergirl. And she was that kind of like the serious, um, lost, vengeful, angry, serious really awesome superhero in the in the bunch and you had flash who was a little goofy kind of serious mature and then you had the multiverse version of himself was just a complete goof unaware idiot so it was kind of weird. That's what I mean when I say about the cocktail thing. Like mixing different cocktails and just someone that doesn't know anything about cocktails but say this is a lot of beverages. Some taste good, some taste cool, some taste bitter, some taste strong, some taste sweet. Let's all mix it up and see what happens. As I said once again, it's over. The way they did certain characters, like when you saw, for example, Tom Curry in the movie, he did not meet um, the Queen of Atlantis. Arthur Curry was not born the way you thought he would be born. Um, Ray Fisher never became Cyborg. There was just a lot of things that were different when one thing is changed. And essentially, this kind of makes us kind of accept the fact that it's over. And it's time for James Gunn's new DC Universe Other Worlds or Outer Worlds or whatever he's calling it. I said to myself I wasn't going to like dwell on that or think about that. Um, you did see things like 
Wonder Woman was in this movie. And it was just out of place. I felt like they literally just put her in there. Just to put her in there as a cameo. She literally meant nothing. Same thing like Ben Affleck's Batman. They put him in there. Just to have him in there for a cool set piece. Right? And it's kind of funny that the best action scenes in this movie. It was Michael Keaton Batman. And Ban Affleck Batman. They had the best sequences. It's like, you remember the warehouse scene in, I think it was Batman versus Superman? That, that scene is still to this day one of the best action sequences in a movie ever. One of the best, yeah? I kind of feel like Michael Keaton Batman in his own style kind of topped it. With his action, his action sequences were over the top and godlike. Everything, even with the the bat craft or the, the I don't know the the bat jets or whatever it's called. Yeah, the introduction it had was amazing. He was and even when he was in the spacecraft, like his I'm sorry, the bat craft, and he came into the they were gonna save Spot M. Supergirl, and he was like, your parachute, you're strapped to your parachutes. And they said, where's yours? And he just looked at them, like, he's like, don't need one. I'm Batman. So, and he just glided straight down and then just opened his wings and he just flew too much. Too much, too much. Yeah. And it was just all those sequences. And he did feel like a human being, but just a... Pushing the limits of the capabilities of a maximum human. When I think about Michael Keaton, I want to give this movie more than a 7 out of 10. But I can't. Because that's what the movie is. That's my review of The Flash 2023. One thing I would get this movie as well is it was over two hours, but it didn't feel like two hours. And that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. It would be nice if a lot of things got given more context. Right? Like a lot of scenarios. Like, for example, who did kill Nora Allen? No real context there. Um, Iris West was in it. Something was off. Like, I didn't feel the romance... With Iris and Barry Allen. I didn't feel it. I didn't. It felt like friends and anything more was just being forced. Right. Um, Nicolas Cage as Superman. His kind of like dark universe. It looked, seemed like they put it in there just because it's always been a myth. Right. Everyone seen like pictures of the screen test that he had with it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. There's certain things that I don't know what to think about the movie. But the one thing that I do know was Zod versus Supergirl. Amazing. The introduction of the movie. The opening action sequence with Ben Affleck Batman and Flash. Wow. Wow. Even though the outfit for um, Ben Affleck Batman looked terrible. It looked so bad. Like, what the hell was that? But the pacing for the movie was good. The pacing was good. The action sequences, every single action sequences were good. The depiction of Barry Allen in the Speed Force when he was running was really good. His suit looked good. And um, the acting that... The Flash and the Flash had together was really godlike. Um, he had the Armageddon punch. Kind of like the Armageddon punch, but it was kind of like an Armageddon blast that he had. Um, he had his phasing ability in the movie. And those kind of things were good. It's really like, you just think to yourself, how good? I, I mean, I've got to say it, man. You've got to say how good an actor he was. 
Because he's acting to himself. But in the same time, the CG in the movie was bottom tier. Like, there were some sequences where the CG was good. Like, about 10% of the time. 90% of the CG was really bad. Like, it was odd. And it was obviously, obviously terrible. To the point where I think, to a certain degree, they were trying to sabotage the movie. I don't know. I don't know. So, in closing, good movie. 7 out of 10. As I said in my spoiler-free review, if you've got absolutely nothing to do, and you've checked your diary, you checked your phone, you've called people, double-checked, and you've got still nothing to do, then sure, go watch your movie. If your finances are, you've got a lot of disposable income, and you've got a lot of money in the bank, double-check everything, and if still, yeah, I've got disposable income, and there's nothing else you want, sure, go watch your movie. And, um, yeah, that's all i really got to say about the movie. Um, yeah, it's over. Snyderverse is unfortunate. It's deeply unfortunate because I just kind of feel like we never got to see the godlike Ban Affleck solo Batman movie we could have got, and we never got a we never got a Superman two, a Man of Steel two. That kills me the most. I mean, I wonder if it was if it's possible we could get a Supergirl movie. I would really like it if we got um, Supergirl, Kara, she had her own movie. But I don't feel that's going to happen. It would be too messy if she did get her own movie. But I would love to see her in her own movie. The Flash 2023 Supergirl, her to get her own movie. That would be amazing. But I don't think it's going to happen. It's too confusing, too messy. Wouldn't work. But I'd love to see it. Warriors, that's all I've got for this review. Let me know what you guys think about The Flash 2023. And we'll take it from there. I've got more videos coming. Stick with me. You know I appreciate you guys watching. Um, like and share and subscribing. You click on the bell icon. You get notifications when my videos go live. It keeps me doing this thing and motivated. So, um, yeah, you guys are here watching. I'm going to keep doing it. All right, Warriors. Till my next video, take care. Stay blessed and uh, catch you next one. Laters.